Hi there, this is Miss Caitlin from Bebo Kids Art Academy, and I'm here to tell you about the Around the World series, where we visit the seven continents of the world. In this class, we'll usually check out different countries around the globe, learn about their map, their flag, different cultures, landmarks, or wildlife that reside within the countries. Today, we're going to take a little sneak peek at the region of Polynesia, which is a part of the greater region of Oceania. We're going to go look at some flowers that you can find amongst these different islands within the region. All right, so this project is just supposed to be a little sample, a little taste of our Around the World projects. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and switch to my desk and show you what we're going to do. All right, so here is just a quick little sample of some flowers that we're going to be creating today and create them in this sort of spread out composition. Now, for the project, you're going to need a pencil and eraser, of course, some watercolors, watercolor paper, and a permanent marker of some kind. You can use Sharpie for all of this, but you could also use like maybe a pink permanent marker of some kind if you want to really get into the colors of the different flowers that we have today. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to just set all of my different supplies off on the side here. I'm going to probably leave our picture over here so you can kind of see the direction we're going to go. You're going to see me draw with a Sharpie today. This is not because I want you to draw with a Sharpie right now, but I just want to use a Sharpie so that you can see my lines. Please use a pencil for your drawing today. All right, so there are many different flowers throughout the regions of Polynesia. Uh, the one that we're going to draw first today is a hibiscus flower. You probably know this one, especially if you visit Hawaii. It's one of their flowers. Um, it's absolutely beautiful, and they're quite large, too. Now, the hibiscus flower is this one right here. They can come in yellow, red, this one's kind of like an orangey red, and even in stunning pink. So let's go ahead and start with the stem. They have these really long stems that come out. We're kind of looking at it face on today. So the stem is, it looks like it's shorter, but it's actually extending out. So go right about here on your paper. And to draw the stem, you're just gonna draw two curved lines and connect with a curved line. The stem at the, not the stem, excuse me, this kind of centerpiece of the hibiscus, it has like this sort of almost fluffy like texture on the very top of it. So we can just simply draw almost like a little fluffy cloud shape today to keep it easy for us. And then it kind of stems out a little bit into these different little fluffs. So you can just draw maybe like four little circles and you can connect them all to that center. Now this connects to the rest of the flower. We're just gonna draw a circle around that so that we have a good idea of where everything's gonna go. And now we're gonna start drawing the petals. Now these petals are enormous. You can kind of see they kind of go around like this. So we're gonna do this very slow. You can see the petals aren't exact. Uh, they're kind of ruffly on the end. Think of it like the end of like a very flowy skirt. We want this to be big because it's kind of our main subject here, or at least like the one that we wanna anchor everything on the page with. So start from this circle. It's going to make it easier for you to draw the petals and draw a big curved line up and then you can kind of wiggle it out as you get towards the top of the petal. This part is going to be a little bit cropped off. Then you're just going to move a little bit around and we're going to draw the next petal. We'll kind of connect things as we go. So you're going to start from our circle again. You're going to draw a curved line up. You can make it a little roughly, wiggle it around and curve in. Start back at the circle, curve up. You want to touch the side of our last petal, curve around. Again, you can make it pretty roughly. Go back to the circle, go up, curve around. And then this one's going to be a little tricky because uh, it's hidden by our kind of center of the hibiscus here. So you might have to just pretend like, okay, I started from the circle, I'm drawing up, roughly line, and connect over. This one we're going to have to connect for ourselves because it's off the side of the paper there. And there we have our hibiscus. Now hibiscus flowers, like many different plants, are not just, are not just for looking beautiful. They also have a lot of medicinal purposes. Um, apparently, according to this one, you can use it a lot in tropical tea, which is great, or other drinks. And apparently it is a great digestion aid. All right, next flower, we're going to draw the Tahitian gardenia. So this is the flower you see right here. I always kind of think they look like daisies, but they're not exactly. Daisies have a little bit of a bigger center. These are really beautiful. Another name for them is the Tairi Tahiti. Now they are actually the symbol of Tahiti. And this flower will usually be worn behind the ear. 
Now, this flower has seven petals, so we're going to draw a tiny little circle. It's going to be for the center. We're going to place one over on this side. Now, the petals are pretty easily shaped. They're just long, curved lines. If you want it to look a little bit more natural, try not to make them super duper perfect, but do try to make them all the same length. So you're going to start from the circle. You're going to draw a curved line up and around, up and around, and you're going to do this seven times until you make your way all the way around. Again, sometimes it can be a little tricky to make flower petals, make them look consistent. Just try your best. So let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, I've got my seven. We're going to add another one kind of towards the top here, and we want this one to be a little bit bigger. This is, again, going to kind of create this uh, dynamic composition of flowers we have flowing down from everywhere. It's like somebody just dropped a bunch of flowers across our picture. So you're going to draw a little circle and then seven really big petals this time. We want these to be enormous all the way around. Okay, next flower. We are going to draw the jasmine, but it's also called the bitate. Now, it is a small, often described as sweet white flower, and it's also probably one you know because Princess Jasmine is named after these ones. So for these, we can actually have some fun spreading them out wherever we want. Um, I have a bunch of them all over my picture. You're usually going to find them. Um, there's a couple different varieties. We have these here. They have five petals on each, and the petal shape is not exactly a curved line. It's almost like um, sort of like a leaf-like shape. So let's draw one right here. Let's start with that center. You're going to draw a curved line up, curved line down. You want it to point. Curved line up, curved line down. And you want five of these petals. You can have fun kind of drawing them, sort of cropped off the side. We'll use these sweet little flowers to fill in little spaces maybe. Like maybe we want to fill in some more spaces down here. Maybe there's one kind of sneakily behind the hibiscus. And we can draw more, but we have one more kind of flower to get in. And this is the plumeria. Now these can come in white, they can come in yellow or in pink, and sometimes a combination of the three. To draw these, it's a little tricky, but let's start with the biggest one here. Draw a little circle for the center. We don't need it to be very big. Um, and to make this as easy as possible for us, because the petals are kind of all folded in on top of each other, I'm gonna have us draw this in a kind of unique way. First, I want you to start from the center, draw a curved line up, and a slim curved line down. And I want you to do this five times. Now, I know this is a little strange, but we're gonna do this five times. So it's almost gonna look like maybe like a really thin starfish for a second. So you're gonna end up with something that looks like this. Then on the top, you're just gonna curve around, curve around, and curve around. And that's how we'll make the petals of this flower today. You can draw a second one right here. Same technique. This way it'll look like all those petals are folded in on top of each other. If you run into another flower, that's okay. You can just have the petal sort of underneath the flower that you had drawn before. I think I want to include the last jasmine up at the top here. And there we go got quite a few flowers on our picture today. You can probably see in the background there are very subtle um, like outlines of leaves. You can add those in in the coloring steps. Now I'll do some of the coloring with you today. Uh, the ones that have the most color are the hibiscus flower and the plumerias, but the other flowers are typically white. So you can just add some shading to them, do some gentle outlining, uh, but you don't really have to fill them in with too extreme of color. So I'll just do uh, our two larger and more colorful flowers today. Now, for this hibiscus, remember, the colors that they usually come in are this really bright yellow, red, or pink. You could make it orange if you want to as well. So go ahead and choose a color. It can be any. I did a, like an orangey color on that picture, but I think I might do a red hibiscus for our picture we're making together. I think hibiscus flowers are so beautiful. 
hibiscus tea is also really nice. Now there are a lot of traditions of flowers that we find in Polynesia. One tradition you might know already, which is very popular, is the lei, which is that necklace of flowers. Now oftentimes the leis you might receive, um, you know, sometimes at parties or things like that, uh, they're made out of plastic, and so the flowers aren't real or they're like made out of a synthetic material. But oftentimes when you're like visiting, for example, Tahiti is a very popular tourist destination, um, you will be welcomed with a lei, a necklace of flowers that are all real. And real leis are really time consuming to make. And the flowers, they obviously don't last for long once you've picked them. And so they're really, really special. I think each time you receive a real lei, you should treasure it because somebody put a lot of love and effort into creating it. And it looks stunning and smells really good too, like flowers. It's really a way to show like an appreciation or just a gesture of, you know, like, welcome, glad you're here. All right, so carefully filling this in, just try your best to go along with the shape of your petals. If you want, you can be a little fancy about it and you can add wet into wet and maybe add in like, you know, yellow along the fringes of the petals. That would be really interesting or even orange if you really want to get super colorful with it today. But as I mentioned, I'll just fill in these flowers with you. And then you can do your background and decide what colors you'd like to add there. Now I've done a green background because um, a lot of these flowers come from tropical places and so you're going to have a lot of green plant life hanging around and it just kind of seemed the natural choice. But if you want to do a different color like a pink or a blue background, that also would be really pretty. I recommend adding a little bit more of the color towards the center of the flower because that's where uh, the petals are all folding up together, they're kind of all kind of going back into the stem, the inside. So the color is going to appear uh, just slightly darker there. You can see it in our example. So you can kind of play around with that, add some shading here and there. For our little center of the hibiscus, I might switch to a smaller brush, maybe use some yellow, and fill that in. Again, you can add shading all you like, but I'm going to stick to just flat colors today to show you what spaces you want to get colored in. All right, for the plumerias, I made mine pink, and so I'm going to probably go with a pinkish color today. I have red violet, which is pretty close to pink, that I used here, and I can just start filling that in along the sides. Now, a lot of times you're going to find a lot of the color concentrated on the inside of the petals here because again they're kind of folded in and so when you paint them it's almost like you're shading them in as you go. You're gonna find the centers as well are a little bit more um, not necessarily saturated with color but you're just gonna find a little bit more of the color there too. You can kind of Use a little bit more water on your brush or just wipe off the water you have and spread out the color that is already present after you put it down. And you can fill in, of course, the edges of the petal. Now I've added orange and yellow to the center, which you can also do. Kind of show you what that can look like. And just adding it to those little tiny parts in the center here. And that can really make it start to stand out even more. I'll go ahead and fill in that last one down here and then I'm going to entrust the rest to you. All right, so just carefully filling that in. Again, you can switch to a smaller brush if it's going to help you feel a little bit more confident going in. And you can fill those flowers. Now an important thing, if you ever do receive a real lay of flowers, it's important that when it time comes for you to dispose of it, because maybe the flowers have wilted, they're no longer good, or maybe you just have to dispose of it for some other reason, you shouldn't throw it in the trash. Instead, you should find a way to return it back to the earth. So one thing that you could do if you live by the ocean is you can release the flowers back to the ocean, or you could even um, put them in your garden or just give them back basically. 
in some way. We want to be respectful and thankful for the earth that gave us these flowers because they're quite stunning. All right. So that's how you can fill in the flowers very simply. Um, to fill in the Tahitian gardenias as well as the gardenias, I could be saying that wrong, as well as the jasmine flowers, you can just add like little outlines of shading along the sides with your watercolor, maybe with like a light blue. You can even do light pink if you so desire. For the background, that is going to be up to you. You can add in leaves. Again, you could maybe do like a blue for the sky, blue for the water, or you can just do a color that you enjoy a lot of. So that just about does it for this little sample project. I hope you had fun creating these flowers and learning a little bit about the flowers you might find in Polynesia. For more detailed classes for the Around the World series where I go into more detail in the drawing steps and more coloring steps, you can go to FeboKidsArtAcademy.com and look for the Around the World series classes. I hope to see you all very soon. Bye for now, everyone.